After receiving the Synology DS416 NAS and completing my Plex test, I was eager to jump right in to a full review on the device. But I found myself completely sidetracked by all the easy features it had and quickly realized I had no idea how much stuff this thing had to offer. Okay, so I'll be honest, this is my first pre-built network attached storage device I have ever used. In the past, I've always built my own using spare parts and free software like FreeNAS. But what gets me is how easy everything is to use with the Synology device and how many packages are available right from the start. Now, I'm not saying that free NAS is difficult to use, but to a first time user, it can have a little bit of a learning curve. And since you have to set up and install everything yourself, you can also run into some issues. With the Synology NAS, all I did was put in the hard drives and boot it up. I mean, sure, I had to do a quick update to the software, but within minutes, I was up and running. While my first free NAS build took me almost two hours to complete. The point is, I had to not only build my own custom NAS, but then I had to install and configure the software to run it. With the DS416, the hardest thing I had to do was cut through two layers of boxes to get it out of the packaging. Let's go ahead and move on to the topic of this video, discovering everything that it has to offer. Now, I won't be going through a complete walkthrough on how to set up and use everything, but I will highlight a few key features. When you first start up your Synology NAS and you get your basic stuff set up, you're greeted with a set of recommended packages. And while most of these are useful, the best stuff is found in the package center. Before we get into that though, let's take a look at some of the recommended packages that have already proved to be very useful, the cloud and download station. The cloud station works by installing software on a client machine. This includes PCs, tablets, phones, and other Synology NAS devices. Once installed, you can easily back up your photos and videos with ease. Of course, it's not limited to that kind of stuff while using it on your PC, but it is still super easy. The only downside I've found is that it does require you to initialize the sync on your phone or tablet, so you would have to remember to do so every once in a while. However, I think this is more of a device limitation rather than the software. Now we have the download manager, which is basically just a torrent client. I found it very fast and easy to use. I was looking for some sort of a remote web interface like uTorrent has, but I didn't find anything. However, I could set up a watch folder, so if I moved a torrent or an NZB file into it, it would start automatically. It does handle quite a few different types of downloads too, including Usenet, torrents, FTP, and some Chinese peer-to-peer -peer thing that I had no idea even existed. Overall, it's a great utility to have on a machine that should be running 24 hours a day. As I covered in my previous video, Plex is an option as well. Some Synology NAS devices are powerful enough to have the transcoder enabled, while some are not. The DS416, for example, was not powerful enough to even use the transcoder. But I am looking to have the DS415 Plus sent to me, which is powerful enough and should allow me to do some further testing. Speeding this up a bit, let's talk about some of the real nerdy stuff that you can use it for. For example, you can run a web server right off the NAS. This includes packages for WordPress, Joomla, Tomcat, PHP, Perl, and MySQL. So right out of the box, assuming you have a good enough internet package, you could host your own website. On top of that, you can also host your own email, DNS, proxy, and VPN servers. This is all from one little box that's barely bigger than the hard drives inside it. And I know that the performance of all these won't be anywhere close to a full-blown dedicated server, but if you have any need for some basic hosting, or maybe even a test environment for some web applications, this could be a perfect solution for you. Also, if you have any IP cameras connected to your network, the surveillance station will allow you to monitor and record all of them at once. You can even host an iTunes server that will allow you to play your songs and playlists from anywhere inside your home. Actually, if you combine that with your VPN server, you could probably play it from anywhere you want. If you wanted to, you could even use the media server package that Synology offers and use the basic DLNA service to play media files off of it. It won't be as pretty or robust as Plex, but it could still work. I could go on for a while covering the large amount of options that Synology offers through their packages, but to be honest, the ones that I mentioned were the only ones that I found interesting. They do still offer a lot of additional tools that small businesses could use, along with more backup options and syncing. I recommend checking out the link in the description to see a full package list and discover what might be interesting to you. After all, everyone has their own needs and desires, so for me to tell you what's useful and what's not might be kind of difficult. 
I also want to thank Synology for allowing me to borrow the DS416. I do have to send it back and I will be sad to see it go because I found it very useful to have. But it was nice to discover everything that I had to offer and learn just how robust such a small machine can be. I would like to do a full review on this device, but unfortunately I don't have the proper networking hardware that will allow me to take full advantage of its speed. If I owned a proper managed network switch, I could set up link aggregation and really put it to the test. But since I don't, I won't be able to provide accurate results reflecting its full potential. That's okay though, this has still been an eye-opening experience overall, and I have a newfound respect for pre-built NAS devices. I can't wait to test out the more powerful version to see how well the Plex transcoder will perform on it. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that upcoming video. You could also follow me on Twitter at underscore bite my bits. So like this video if you found it useful. Thank you for watching and have a good day.